Hello there, my beautiful book lovers. My name is Kimia, and welcome to my book nook. Another month is over, and it's time for a wrap up. I was able to read 14 books in February, which is an improvement compared to January. I had some very good ones and some very big letdowns, but let's get into them, shall we? First book that I read for this month was The Body, A Guide for Occupants by Bill Bryson. This was a fascinating book. Uh, the book is really about everything that's happening with our body. It's in different chapters and talks about everything that is related to how the body works, how it can be affected, what's going on with it, and everything in between. It was a very interesting read because there were some part of it that at least for me, it was just like, I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna pass out. But generally it was really entertaining and at the same time, very educational. It's a nonfiction, but at the same time, I felt that the way that he broke up the book into different chapters and sections, it was very well done. I kept it in a sort of a story mood that you're just following him through body moving from different part one to another and each chapter even though they are separate from one another they're connected through something and because of that i found it like a really fascinating story of our body and what's happening to it so i highly highly recommend it if you can take some of the icky part of it it's a great read to do then i read anxious people by frederick backman i have talked about how much i adore his writing before he is a person that really knows how to write a very witty but also entertaining and interesting book this book it's about a robbery going super wrong but when you like hear about like robbery thieves police you're expecting something very action-packed but this is not the case it's really about all of these groups of people that come together and what is their backstory how they all are human how they have all their flaws but at the same time there are some boundaries and lines that at the end of the day we want to help each other and sometimes we understand why some people might do something that it's wrong in general but sometimes you have no other option so i love this book it was so great i finished it super fast just because i really wanted to see what's the story of the next character because there is we have a bunch of them and they're all like it's very interesting to see how at the first impression they don't like each other that much most of them but then they start to get to know each other and they realize that how they have a lot of things in common, how they can help each other. And so because of that, it was great. If you have not read any of his books, please do. They're just wonderful. So, so wonderful. Then after that, I listened to Binti by Nindi Okorafor, if I'm not wrong. And then that book, it's a sci-fi. It's about this young girl, Binti. She's from a poor sort of a family and she's finally get this chance to attend this very prestige university to study and so she's very excited about it she wants to go and so her family it's a little bit not sure about it she lives in this society that it's not really for like young girls studying and um you know going to universities or whatnot but she really has set her mind to it and so she's super excited and finally she goes to this spaceship that is supposed to take them to the university and then while they're going there are some events happening and things goes wrong and all of that it was an interesting read i i enjoyed it i give it i think like three or 3.5 it was a solid good book but i think i need to give it a little bit more time another book probably to see if it's good enough to stick with it or if i should just skip the rest of it and then after that i read the beautiful ones by sylvia moreno garcia i loved uh, mexican gothic i have mentioned that i think a thousand times already and so I was very excited for this one. The cover, it's gorgeous. I loved it. And especially because like it was February and I really wanted to read a lot of different sort of romances. And this one, it has the element of romance, but it's also really about magic and fantasy and has those elements to it. It was a very entertaining read to do. There is one character that it's really just uh, I didn't know how to feel about her, 
But in general, I liked his story. I liked what he was representing. I liked how he played a little bit with the, like, the elements of magic and like fantasy and like everything that was related to it. And it wasn't like pure romance and it had that extra element for it. So I enjoyed it. I thought it was a very good book. Then I read Waiting to Excel by Terry Macmillan. This book, it was, no. <laughs> I give it one star and I usually don't do that but this one it was simply because all of the characters they were just horrible they were doing things that they didn't care how wrong it was and that was the reason that made me really question the book because I enjoyed how it was trying to show the hardship the book it's about a group of women and how they're struggling with love and relationship and everything related to that so because of that it was interesting to me and since again i wanted to read a couple of different romances for this month i was interested to see how this one will play especially because like this one wasn't really relying on the romance on the like the pinky flowery happy side of it but in the everything that is wrong with it and could go wrong with it so i was very interested to see what it's happening but then because of the acts that these characters were doing i was just so put off and so because of that unfortunately it was the first book that really let me down this month and then i read the dead romantics by ashley poston this book it's cute i enjoyed it uh the book it's about we have this young girl she's a ghost writer for a famous author and so she is writing a lot of romance novels for her and then she and her boyfriend they broke up and now she really believes that romance is dead and so she doesn't know how to finish the last book that she's writing for this author and then she needs to because of different events goes back home to the city that she used to live with her family and there is this little extra thing about her she can see ghosts so it was adorable to really see these two characters coming together how these two character we have the main character and then we have the ghost um and it's it was nice. I felt the ending was a little bit... We could have wrapped it up faster. <laughs> but all in all, it was still enjoyable. It was better than the last book that I read, so I enjoyed it. Then moving to the next romance, which was Bringing Down the Duke by E.V. Dunmore. That one was another cute little book. It was sort of a kind of a combination of Pride and Prejudice with Bridgerton, if that makes sense in a sense, because we have the Duke, but also the Duke and our main character, they don't like each other. So we have this main character of ours and she has been finally able to come to this um, all woman university and she's studying there she's very excited about and she joined this group that are fighting for women's right and um, because of that she's given this mission to pursue the duke to really use his power to push for women's right for women's right to vote and so she's trying to figure out how to do it, what to do. And so it was really interesting to see these two characters coming together and how they each learn something from one another and different perspective. Because like the Duke, he has been dealing with politics for quite longer than her. And so he's kind of showing her how sometimes you have to not push too hard and how you have to approach all of these like white old men that writing the rules and at the same time for her to really shows him why it's important to have these rights for women and why she needs and so i enjoyed it and then after reading a lot of lovey-dovey happy <laughs> sort of romance i read la miserable by victor hugo and dear god <laughs> that book it's great phenomenal it's hundred percent like it's a five out of five it's an amazing book and i highly highly recommend it i know when you look at it it's super scary because like it's a huge book you can literally use that book to just attack anybody that's trying to kill you literally but it's worth it because it's just so beautifully written it's one of those books did you read it and you're like yes i should have read this at least one time in my life 
it's about the revolution that is happening in France and we have Jean Valjean that he is this main character that we see him grow from a man that was a thief a man that was really poor and really had a very not a good moral compass and would do things that were questionable and then a person would it's going to help him and then after that event he changes and he really comes back and he really sees that how the stuff that he was doing was wrong and so he decided to make up for everything that he has done and so then we're following going through diff like years and years of his life and everything that is happening but at the same time we have different characters that they're all just coming along this timeline and they're not all related at the same time but at the end they are all connected and that's the, like the one part that I really enjoyed I love it in any books when like you're introduced to different characters and they're not related in any sense to one another but then as the book uh, progress you're going to see how they're going to become connected and they're like the story is going to kind of connect to one another and their path going to cross so this one has that and I really enjoyed it and it's very heartbreaking it's a really hard read honestly in a sense just like at least for me my heart was broken the entire time like I would be like this chapter I would get a little bit of rest and then no something else would happen so because of that it was one of those that it's really really hard to read but it's also good to read to kind of get that perspective and see what was happening back there during the revolution how people were what situation they were when the king was living a lavish life and how poor the rest of the public was or most of the public was and so i highly recommend it it will take a while but yeah it's a very good book you should read it then for another sort of a sad story I read Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. This book, it's about William Shakespeare, but it's not about him really. <laughs> it's really about his son, Hamnet, and how his death affected Shakespeare so much that later, I think four years after his son passed um, at the age of 11, he wrote Hamlet. And so it's really the story, it's not even mention Shakespeare really much and really wanted to talk about his wife Anne and also um, their children and what was happening and so this story started actually at the beginning it's by the time that Hamnet twin is sick and he is looking for her mother for anyone to really help them and every event that happens after that and it really was interesting to see how the chapters would go back and forth between like Hamnet looking for a person to help them and also the past how Shakespeare and Anne met and their relationship um Shakespeare relationship with his dad and so it was a very interesting book it's really about like plague and everything that was happening and it's about grief the loss of a child for a mother and how it affects her and how it changes and the, like their relationship like the mother with the rest of the kids with the like the parents the like the married couple and so I enjoyed it very much it was a very interesting book to see I it's very poetic and it's one of those books that it's slow but in a sense that it's enjoyable and you know what is happening and you know what is going to come but at the same time you're enjoying the journey or at least I very much enjoyed it then I read the second book in the murder bot diaries it's artificial condition by Martha Wells this book it owns my heart honest to god I'm so glad that I came across this series and I honestly could not remember how. I think it was just like looking at Libby for a book that is available to just like listen to something and then it suggested uh, All System Read to me and then I just love this series. It's so good and it's very short but it's so action-packed and it's so witty and funny and it's like these characters are so enjoyable that I never read any sci-fi books that it's like that so that's the reason that I'm very much enjoying it we have this like our murder bot and now it's the story the continuing of his story that now he has separated from his group and he's going on his mission to find what happened in his past 
and he goes on this ship and we um, meet a very lovely character. This character, I love him so much, Art. He is just one of those like sassy characters that it's a good sassy like you know some of those that you don't roll your eyes when they say something and you're just like okay you're trying to like be too mean but like it's one of those characters that because he's also like a sort of a AI he doesn't really has feelings so anything that he's saying it's simply because what he's feeling and like to him sometimes things that Murderbot or the like the humans that are there doing are so stupid that he's just like what are you doing this or what's happening and so because of that i enjoyed it their relationship was just so beautifully done and action was really i that's the thing that i love it the book starts a little bit of a like a quiet and explaining to you what's happening and builds up the characters to gives you a little bit of a sense of connection to them and then all of a sudden everything is going wrong every action that you can possibly imagining is just happening and then at the end, we have this sort of a conclusion for this part. I enjoyed it so much. I can talk about it forever. It was just such a, such a great book. And I was lucky enough that actually the third book, Rogue Protocol, became available while I was like, because I was waiting for it and I was like, oh, come on. And then it became available. So I read that one as well. And this book, it's still very good but it broke my heart because we meet another character and we have Mickey and he is an adorable little robot that he has this sense of connection to his humans and he feels and sees them as like his friends. And so because of that, he's so connected to them, cares about them and everything is just so, you feel for him, he's like a child. He really is like a child, like even like Murderbot, he sees him as a child. And so it's just so beautifully done. It's, I'm not gonna spoil why my heart was broken at the end because just read the book. But it's, again, I am so loving this series so far. And like, you know, like how sometimes in a series, especially a series that has more than like two, three books, it eventually will have one book that will let you down, or at least it's not as good as the rest. But this series so far has been great and I have been enjoying every single one of them. And I highly, highly recommend that if you like sci-fis or if you want to start getting into sci-fi, it's a great one to start with. Then after that, I listened to How to Think Like a Woman by Regan Penaluna. And this book actually is going to come out later this year. Is it March? I think it's going to come out actually in March. Uh, but I was, thanks to Ned Galley, able to listen to an advance copy of it. So the story, it's about four main philosopher, women philosophers, and how they've been trying to prove themselves in a field that it's always has been so male dominant and they wanted to prove that like they have as much right to this field as any other man and any other person really and especially because the author herself she has a study of philosophy and that's actually how she came up with this book and started her research on it because at the beginning when she was in her phd program she didn't realize how they don't study female philosophers much and how there are not even that many and the ones that they are they are categorizing to female philosophy or women philosophy and they don't pay attention or give the recognition that they deserve or are not put in the same even category despite the fact that they're studying the same things and it was fascinating especially because like name one field that has not been male dominant literally nothing nothing because women didn't have a right to study to like do anything really for centuries so because of that any field that it can come up and be like, yes, we do not have enough representation for women, for people of colors. But the thing with this one is that philosophy is something that you cannot really put it into science because you do not really work with like proofs. You know, there is mostly people really just bringing in their ideas and talking about it and draw, trying to bring in some proofs about it. But there is not any hard proof because like with like, with math, with physics, with biology. You can like bring up something, show and like cut it open and be like, here it is. But philosophy is not that and that makes it a little bit harder. And so because of that, a lot of these 
philosopher famous ones they were like yeah women could not understand philosophy their brain cannot handle it they're not as smart and they cannot handle to like go to universities to college they're not equal with men and so it's really and it, it made it so hard for women to join but anyway so it was very interesting to see that but then i read love on the brain by ali hazelwood in this book this is the book that let me down. This is the book that got me so pissed that I just, I couldn't, I couldn't finish it. And so let's, let's go back. This book, it's about B and Levi. They are two main character of our story that are going to work in NASA together to create and build this um, helmet for the astronauts, right? And then the story, it's that B and Levi, they used to go to this school when they were doing their PhD together. And Levi was like two, three years ahead of B. And so they really had just like one year together. But during that one year, B got this feeling that Levi just, she, he hates her and doesn't like her, doesn't want to do anything with her and doesn't want to even like work with her in any of the projects or anything. And so because of that, when she gets offered this job, she's thinking about should she do it because it's going to be a, such a great opportunity for her career and her future or she should like avoid it because Levi is going to be there and they're going to work together. So eventually she's like, no, I will go. And then our story began and we are going to get these two characters. But then, dear God, I, let's first say this, loved and adore love hypothesis and i have talked about that like hundreds of times so many times and so because of that i had such a high expectation for this book and i wanted it to be as good as great to read it as fast and be excited about it but then let's take a deep breath because it just pissed me off already and the thing is okay because before i say i loved levi and i actually loved him much more than adam because with adam from love hypothesis you don't really get his backstory too much you don't connect to him or at least i didn't i felt that like we could have get to know him more but that was okay i still enjoy that book but with levi he is such a sweet guy and like you know one of those that sure he had issues with communication but that's because of his past and you actually get to know his past and why he was like that so you know all in all perfect character but then we have b and she's an adorable character don't get me wrong she is but the issue is that i hate it when we have character a and character b and character A thinks that character B hates her or him, but in this case her. And she's just convinced because of everything that had happened. That's fine. Yes, I also sometimes feel somebody doesn't like me or something because the way that they treat me. That's fair. But then we have this entire time. Things are happening. We're even talking. We're explaining that, you know, those were mistakes. I did something wrong. I didn't mean it like that. I like you. I love you. I was obsessed with you for years and all of that. And yet this character, it's still in denial the entire time. It's like, no, I know this is not real. I know this is just a fling. I know that he's going to marry somebody else and I'm going to be heartbroken. And I'm just sitting there like, are you kidding me? And especially because this character, our B, she is super smart. She studies neuroscience. She is a person that's working for NASA because like she's that great that they're trusting her to build this ha helmet, right? So she is smart and yet she is in just like set to say that Levi doesn't love her. Not like that. It was like that before, but it's not like that anymore. It could not be. And I was just like so pissed at this and I don't like it when it happens in books. And I was so sad that it happened in this one because like, if we want to make the book longer, that's fine. But at least throw like dramas, something. Something that it's just believable, that it's like fine and fun to read not something that makes you to go this mad and just want to throw the book across the room, go kill yourself and kill B because like you're like, woman, what are you doing? Why are you in denial this much? And this man is doing everything, everything 
to prove to you that he loves you. And yet you're just sitting there like, no, no, no. I know this is not true. So that was the reason this book just let me down a lot. And I cannot talk about it anymore. And I'm going to hide it at the back of my bookshelf and never look at it ever again. Even though I'm going to reread Love Hypothesis. I already have read it like twice, three times. I'm going to read it again because I enjoyed that book and I love them. And then I might switch Adam with Levi in my own brain and then enjoy that book even more. But this never, ever will look at it ever again. Just, just no. But anyway, and last book that I read for this month. I'm sorry, I got so worked up. I just, I couldn't, I needed to get it out. And the last book that I read was Infamous by Lex Crocher. And this book also is coming out this March or later this year sometimes. And thanks to NetGalley, I was able to listen to an advanced copy of it. This book is happening in Regency era. And we have our main character, Edie, and her best friend, Rose. They have been friends since a very young age. They grew up together, they do everything together, and you know, best of the friends. And then by the time that they're getting older, Rose is starting to think about marriage and, you know, going into the society and all of that. But Edie is really about reading and writing her books. Um, she really wants to become an author. And she's just like, I don't want to do any of these things. Rose, don't do it and don't force me to do it. But then Rose is like, we have to be realistic. We're women, we have to marry because, you know. And so this story, it's about their relationship and how that changed, especially because eventually Rose um, meets this guy and she's like, I'm going to marry him. And Edie meets Nash. He is a famous poet and he likes her. And it's like, you know, you write, I'm going to help you to write your book, to get it published. I will like introduce you to my publisher. And so Edie is very excited about that. And so Nash invites um, Edie, Rose, her fiance, and then like Nash himself with his wife and a couple of friends. They're all going to this island, little place that um, Nash owns and with his wife. And um, they're going there to like sort of a retreat to all work on their projects and like, you know, be artistic. And this story is really about Edie, her relationship with these two characters and trying to find confidence in herself, her writing, and also realizing what's her relationship with Rose. If it's something more there, if it's just really friendship or really those feelings that she has for Rose are not just like friendship sort of love, but it's love love. And also her relationship with Nash, because like he's this, again, since he was a, like a famous poet, um, Edie really loved him and in a sense of like had read his work and like, you know, adored him and was like really looking up to him. And I liked this book, it was good. I didn't, there was like a little bit piece of things that I didn't like much. There's one character that his ending was a bit too vague for my liking, especially because like he was an important character and his backstory was very important. And so because of that, the way that his ending was just kind of like rushed and put under the rug, I didn't enjoy that. And also I felt the sort of a, like the drama and the villain that we had, it was just there to be there. And it wasn't really explained in this way for us to connect to our villain and know why. And so because of that, it was a, like a good solid three. I enjoyed reading it and I suggested for at least one time reading, it was fun, but it wasn't something that I would go back to it, but maybe I'm not the audience for it, but I don't know, maybe I am. I'm just like, you know, it was one of those books that you read and you're like, you're good, but you could have been better. And you know, and that's all the books that I read for February. Thank you so much for sticking around because this was a roller coaster of me just being happy about a book and then super disappointed at one. And so let me know what was the book that you read this month that was either super great or let you down. And till the next video, happy reading.